This is the Weekend Edition. Get to Sunday, May 10th, 2015. My name's Des Woodruff. Here, for the next few moments, I'll give you the very best technical analysis on the major broad markets. And you'll notice that at this moment that we have two charts here. Uh, we do have a daily chart here on this side, on the right side, on the left side, we have a weekly chart. So because it's the weekend edition, we're going to be looking at daily and weekly uh, together. However, one caveat I want to share with you is anytime I put a line on my daily or on my weekly, those lines show up on the other chart. So the lines that I would have drawn um, correctly would be the ones on my daily. The lines on my weekly are not correct so uh, however I can't erase them if I were to delete these these would delete also so I'm using trading view and that's something that I hope that we can do maybe there is a way that I can uh, make these lines different than the lines that I have here so just need to figure it out still learning the ropes here so on Friday the markets had a very nice bullish day however the problem is small caps, the Russell's 2000 and banks were a little laggy compared to the other major indices. Uh, precious metals were bullish also. I want to pay particular attention here to the S&P 500. This is the spider. We were seeing danger, 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 problem, problem, problem when we broke these areas of support. When that happened, I thought we are in just dire trouble here. Uh, however, I wasn't convinced because I wasn't getting follow through with the financials. You remember me talking about that. So I remained flat the market. A lot of you are asking, what does that mean, flat the market? Flat the market t typically means being out of the market, not holding any positions. You could argue that flat the market means that you are hedged neutral, that doesn't matter if the markets go higher or lower because your hedge or your offsetting trades that you have uh, would basically keep you buoyant wherever you happen to be at that moment when you set your hedge, regardless of market uh, tur turbulence. So taking a look here, we had a major gap higher and we ran right into resistance. Now this resistance is an area that is very, very important to me as a, a technician. If you go back here, draw a line from, this is March 3rd, 2015, March 2nd. I'd do March 2nd, 2015. Mark that as a point, draw it across to uh, April 24th, 2015. You can see that actually below down here. And, uh, and then to, Day, going into the weekend, we're at that resistance again. So every time we get to this resistance, we tend to drop. However, this happened on big volume. I think that we have a decent chance of breaking through resistance in the markets going bullish here. I'm telling you on the weekly chart, we went down, 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 busted all this area of re or support. And that was a good chance for the bears to take control and for this to get bloody and quickly. However, the markets continue to stay buoyant. And we rally back up, 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 up. And uh, there's a good chance that we're just going to keep going higher here. It seems like every time the markets start to take a nasty dip, something comes in in the 11th hour and saves it from certain death. And sure enough, that was what happened on Friday on big volume. Friday volume usually light, but not this Friday. Big pop, but it smacked its head right into resistance. Now, a lot of times when you get a major pop right into resistance like this on big volume, that usually is indicative of a breakthrough taking place. So I, if I had a gun to my head, I would say there's probably an 85% chance we're actually going to go bullish going into next week. And that goes against my technician uh, book studies because we're at resistance. I mean, the last time we were at resistance here, we dropped. We hit that red line resistance. We had a big drop. We come up, hit this resistance, nice drop. Come up, hit this resistance, a nasty little drop. 
we hit this resistance, we should drop. But I'm telling you now, because of what I'm seeing on how it gapped higher, how it popped and smashed his head against resistance, on big volume, it's like a lot of lot of strength hitting the ceiling. It's like a big bowling ball being shot from a cannon from your floor up into your ceiling, and it's at the ceiling with a lot of pressure behind it. So it's much easier to pop a hole through because of that energy that's sending that ball upward. So this goes boom right up here. So it'd be interesting to see how this plays itself out. Uh, I wanna take a look here at the Dow. The Dow started to break down, started to break down, then boom, big break over resistance areas. A lot of, uh, I know it's harder to see because it's narrow. So I gotta bring in some more data here so we can see it. But look at this, resistance, 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 boom, over that. Trend line, trend line, we're all the way down, boom, over that. Very, very, very powerful and decent volume. The weekly chart going up, 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 and away. Very nice, NASDAQ, let's take a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ was flirting with death and then boom, back above. But here's the issue. Relatively speaking, the NASDAQ is laggy compared to what we're seeing the Dow and the S&P 500. But we are above the 20-day moving average. That's that blue line coming across here, but just not nearly as impressive as what we were seeing on the other two major indices. Now, small caps, which is very important to me as a trader to watch for future indications. It is a barometer. And what's interesting here, we gapped higher, but it gave us a red candlestick on Friday. This is saying, hey, not overly interested in, in this pop. Uh, so it shows me some lagginess taking place. And look how f further down it is from the 20-day moving average. Instead of being above it like everybody else, this is well below it. And, and that pop happened on itsy bitsy declining volume. I mean, the last three up days we received in small caps, the volume just got weaker. problem -esk for small caps and if we take a look here oh, let's go here to the banks the banks you'll see that i have a lot of trend lines drawn here a lot of trend lines da, 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 da. this is a this cocoon if you will that i built around this this price action and we're just in the middle of this above a 20-day moving average but gang this is just doing a whole lot of nothing but again another red candlestick a hanging man so uh, we do not have an undercurrent support of the financials here at all. As far as the week is concerned, you know, nice bullish move here uh, for the week. But it's not that impressive when you look at the daily week. It's, it did go higher, but it's just, I mean, it's not at, at resistance yet. So anyway, I, I'll, I'll be watching these financials and the small caps pretty closely here. And and I'm gonna go take a look here at some tech stocks of you know, of interest. Apple. A lot of you guys like to trade Apple. Friday was just a big boom. It went higher, smashing its head against the 20-day moving average. And here you have kind of a falling wedge. You don't see it because I have a line drawn here. The there's a big or not falling wedge, rising wedge rather, rising wedge. Um, here on the Apple Weekly, which is bad, and look how much time it's spending at this lower blue line. This lower blue line. Look at all the price action. It's not staying any. It's not spending any time at the upper line. See that? It does a touch and drop, touch and drop. But down here on the lower line, look at all this price action. So that's relative weakness. It's not good. Huge volume on the sell side of Apple. So just be careful with you guys who are trading Apple. Amazon has a nice bull pullback. Last couple of days, nice run, just boom, 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 boom here. Looking uh, pretty good on Amazon. Baba came out, did exceptionally well, just boom. It's starting to look good here on some nice volume. Waiting for a bull pullback or a high base to trade off of that. Facebook is just down in the pit. Nothing to trade on that. Google had a nice little pop on Friday but to be quite frank it's just it's broken GoPro um, had a nice bull pullback and I said I was gonna buy that failed to do so missed a ton of money on that I just wasn't convinced that I wanted to be in the markets on this 
And so I left money on the table. I showed everybody this trade, said, hey, I'd be looking to buy over this, and I just missed it. So actually, let me show you another one that I missed um, that I've been trading a little bit. This is Microsoft. Um, here's Taser, nice pullback. Be looking perhaps for a trade on that one if it sets up nicely. And a trend line right there. Yeah, if we could pull back a little more, that might be good to a support area at $30.50 maybe. And that area could be a decent trade. It has a pretty, it's pretty extended on the weekly though. Oh, that's interesting. This thing could be in for a multi-week drop actually. So um, let me put one in that's a heartbreak. So um, this one, you'll see that I had an alerting coming across. I had to, this line at 189 I actually had an alert set for 191 on Friday to buy this thing and it went off I went and looked at it had this little white candlestick down here and just did not want to buy a stock that was under two dollars uh, right on a Friday before a weekend just too risky for me all of a sudden I came back came back to look at my um, this chart and I saw that it gone up 54% this dude went up 54% in a single day and I missed that anytime you get a stock that is 54% in a year you you're running around the house with excitement this happened in a day big big move on the weekly chart on this chop it looks decent um, like it's wanting to take off I'm here for the next few weeks, which could do this. So I'm not saying I'm out of it yet, but I would that I'm not interested anymore. But if this dude could pull back a little bit for me, um, I would be appreciative of that. But usually I do not trade stocks this low, but this one has a lot of volume and does have my interest. And um, there is money to be made off of these. But you need to be high. Let me be shoot straight with you here. Trading stocks that are this volatile you need to be highly educated and skilled in the markets. It's just like if you're going to learn how to ride a motorcycle, you need to be skilled to ride that thing. Furthermore, let's say you're going to learn to fly a plane, you have to be skilled to fly that plane. Um, so especially if you're going to get into one that has a lot of uh, moving parts, if you will. And you, what you want to do is make sure that you... Uh, know it and know it well so it, it doesn't cost you a lot of money there was a guy flying a stealth bomber mini one around our uh, addition where we live and there's a lake and he was flying over and it's the coolest thing it's very fast and it was just mind-blowing he had led lights on this thing and it was just so cool and all the men and the uh, you know we were stopping our cars and if we were on walks we would walk over to the lake and we were just mesmerized by this piece of machinery he says it was only 300 400 bucks to buy one of these. but he's, And I was saying, man, I'm going to have to get one. He goes, well, you need to start small. And he basically said, because if you start off with this thing, it's so much power and so sensitive, and there's so many things to know about it, that you'll immediately crash and burn that thing. And you might as well burn that 300 bucks in, their, in your backyard. Same principle in trading. You want to start off uh, and build your way up and you know I'll use this as a shameless plug but we actually built something to do just that if you go to grok trade it's just three steps we really took the the complexities of trading and simplified them and we actually pay for this for you the 101 course is on our dime come and take this take you a week or so to go through but once you have that foundation, then you'll be ready to get the most out of your 201 courses. This is more advanced, and this uh, comes. There's a tuition here because this is where we give you the good stuff, and and then the 301s. This is mentoring. This is like, hey, if I'm gonna learn to fly a plane, but I hire you as my flight instructor and to go up with me. This is how you're gonna learn to trade profitably the quickest right here. And you want to do this. And so this is all for the purpose of saving you money. The whole purpose of the step one, two, three 
is so you don't try, go in to start trading because if you're using leverage, you're using margin, you're trading options before uh, you have several years of successful trading in the markets, you're, those are amateur mistakes. And if you're making amateur mistakes right now, what we need to do is put a tourniquet on your bleeding, get you to do one, and two, and three. If you're highly motivated, skip one, get right into two, and do your three and you'll be off to the races and we'll help you reach your full potential as a trader. There's your shameless plug. Anyway, getting back to the charts, if you like this video, then like it below. If you really like it, leave me a comment. And if you love to trade, maybe you have some friends that love to trade, do the share. So that means click on the share button below, share that link with other traders. Catch you guys next time.